Hello, are you out there? I'm Mark with HFD. I had to think about my own personal name there for a moment. <laughs> Local cyber gremlin can't keep it in their pants. This is coming from Anjali, who gave me the okay to read their story. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and this is coming off of r slash RPG horse story, which I subscribe to and I've been getting, you know, it's, it's kind of like the less well-known RPG horse stories, and I think um, it's for folks that are maybe a little newer to the Reddit, posting stuff, and I'm always down for giving a new subreddit a, a look, a look-see. Here we go. Hey all, first time posting here. Heard about this place through some YouTubers like Crispy, Den of the Drake, and Crit Crab, so wanted to share what happened. The cast, names changed. Numbers, a former criminal turned into an edge runner by a corp that was founded in a previous campaign. Motto A Nomad, motto, motto, period, dash. <laughs> a nomad who's just happy to be here with a sick ride. K, the problem player, an overly sexualized netrunner who wants to fuck nasty and die young, played by a male character, as it's important. I think we knew it was going to be played by a male character, and <laughs> I think we guessed that. <laughs> to start, when I recruit for a game, I tend to have two different kinds of red flags. Red flag problem and red flag hard no. That's smart. K was the former, where their enthusiasm for the game was enough to make me want to give them a chance. So you were the DM. And FYI, this is not suitable for work if you didn't already pick up on that from the, the F-bombs, because we said, we said the word fuck. I don't think it was in the first seven seconds, so I don't have to worry about uh, YouTube taking back the 25 cents they were going to pay me for reading this. <laughs> <laughs> so they probably wouldn't even pay me 25 cents. But, um... <sighs> you're the DM. Okay, so they had enough enthusiasm to where you're like, you know what? You're a problem. I see a problem red flag, but it's not a, a, a fuck no red flag. So I'm going to give you a chance. Uh, this is a bad decision on your part, and And I think we're going to find out just how bad it was. And for the first game, they weren't bad. They weren't even that bad in their first side session. No, where the problem start, started were in the OOC chatter, where the topic of their character's breast size, they claimed it was an S cup, was constant. Oh. <laughs> You're like, uh, sorry guys, uh, we're having technical issues on the, um, the OOC channel. Uh, so no more out of character until I can get it repaired. Um, I have a... Request out to Discord, uh, and you just shut it down because it's just turned into like this guy's fetish festival. Oof, S cup. They flavored their character as a gremlin who was basically just there to hang and bang, but also sold their soul to Numbers Corp for free stuff. But their constant sexual sexualization in the OOC made a lot of things more awkward. And despite starting with a lot of enthusiasm, they never really made any attempt to develop their character beyond, look at my tits. It's gross. It is gross. I mean, I, 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 you always wonder, like, when you read these stories, it's like, is this from, like, 30 years ago? Was it, like, 1992 and cyberpunk was a cool new thing and people are all, like, edgy? <laughs> oh, gosh. All guy group? Question mark? This is the same as a character being like, my character has an enormous penis. It's really quite large. It's frighteningly large. <laughs> and you're like, dude, please just stop with the genitals, man. We, no, we, we don't see it. None of us are looking. Even if you undress in front of us, none of our characters are going to look. We're just like, no, no, please. I don't care. It's no. Because <laughs> you're really playing on the trope of, Who's supposed to be aroused by K's character's breast size? The other players? The other players' characters? Question? Question mark. You guys are hetero. You'll dig this, right? <laughs> uh, the DM, as they're running the NPCs who are supposed to react and be like, Bzonga! Right? They're like, I will give you anything because of how enormous your boobs are. Or Finally, and most horribly, is K aroused by this? Is K? It is. It is. It is option C. It is the players who do this are stimulated by their own boobs, boob size of their fantasy character. 
It's like, yeah. It's it's rough. It's rough. Who's it for? It's for Kay. It's for Kay. It's for no one else. And that's... Okay. On the second game, they brought along a hack to the systems at a big Philharmonic's vampires get-together. <laughs> Philhar Philharmonic vampires get-together. But ended up... Just getting trapped into conversations with some guy who wanted to bang her. Wait, that's on you, DM. Are you playing along with this? Okay, now, now in, I feel way less bad. I feel way less bad. You were, you were playing into this. It, it's, I kept saying, you could try to talk your way out of it or just leave. And for some reason, they took it that they had to talk their way out instead of just walking away. Kept failing and then just decided, screw it. I'm going to bang this guy and come back later. <laughs> How did you spend the session last night, dear? Uh, my character was just banging some rando. I missed all the fights. It was kind of depressing. Uh, that's what I get for going and questing alone, I guess. It's like, all right, sweetie, you'll do better next week. It's like, thanks, love. Thanks, honey. Thanks, mom. <laughs> thanks, mom. <laughs> lip kiss. That's a lip kiss. Oh, you're playing into it. You are enabling. You're an enabler. If, if there's nothing written into the books for your cyberpunk system about how big your tits are, it, it has no other functional effect. I'm sorry. Do they have a super high personality or charisma or attractiveness? Then that's, then that's a stat they have. I could see role playing off of that. But you're just like, my character has the bluest eyes ever. They bang constantly. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. For some people, that would be an attractive thing, I guess. So, yeah, it tracks sex all the time because of that one feature you have. It's not actually a game mechanic. I mean, you can have a pheromone pump put in cybernetically in your body that you can set to male-female attractive pheromone. And you just turn it on. Or you can have a neutral setting that puts out both. Ooh, what's going to happen? And then that actually has a mechanical thing within the game rules for how it gives you advantage on on per, on personal interaction checks with with the NPCs around you. But it's just big boobs. That doesn't that doesn't have any power unless you give it power. And listen, I'm not going to lie that it wouldn't have power over me. It would. It, it so would. But <laughs> you don't have to make it work. You don't have to play to this with K. Okay. I feel bad for this guy's wife and or slash mom. though, Because I would not want to hear about my husband slash and or son crying about how his big boob character got totally sidelined from gameplay and their, their, their game session with their, but their bros last night. That would be hard. To, it'd be hard to hear about it in the morning over coffee. This was in a mission where a cyber psycho was stalking the area and was 100% going to come and Fuck this place up. It was obviously a time-sensitive mission. The entire atmosphere was tense for the game, just waiting for this person to show up. But they figured a 10-minute, two-person stretch was reasonable. I had to save them as the GM. They were leaving out front where a guard had shown interest in them and claimed the guy talked her out to his car, needed to get kicked for reasons. Claimed the guy taking her out to his car needed to get kicked out for reasons. So you you had to bounce or bail her out here. 86 to guy. Okay, sure. I mean, you, you pulled it out of the fire in that case and kept your session on its rails. Good job, then. <laughs> really, one of the biggest problems with the character is that there was just nothing there. Their only personality trait was horny. And it was every moment whenever it could be applied. Constantly talking about being able to fuck guards in... Into get into to get into places or other things that were really just uncomfortable. No development, not even after the stuff with the vamps. After this, the focus seemed to be about making armor that was made as naked as possible. You could get you could get subdermal micro microfiber armor, and then it's just under your skin, and then it resists you know impacts. Your skin can still be cut, but it prevents. It distributes the pressure, it hardens so it doesn't crush your internal organs and stuff. Like, you know, like nanosecond, like it's soft, but then it solidifies into a rigid cage, but it's all underneath your skin. 
like think like screen door material, right? And you don't see it, and then you could run around completely naked. But then when it when it hits an impact or something is, you know, cutting you, it 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 tightens up in that spot. It doesn't tighten it; it becomes rigid, and then distributes the pressure. Subdermal microfa microfabric armor. That's what we're talking about here. But there again, uh, yeah, see-through armor, sure. There you go. I'm not 100% on board here, but I like accommodating players. I ran in a side session where they went out and got effectively panties and pasties for armor, which could be dunnish with tech, along with the NPC I'd made for them who I was playing out a flirty little romance. I've done romance with NPCs and characters before, and I'd like to string it out, make them work for it. Sure. You know, it's okay to run romance for folks. But you don't have to, like, run, like... I guess the, the issue is playing into the trope that every bouncer or every salesman behind a counter is just going to fall over themselves because one of your players just says how big their tits are, right? Like, it's not a character trait. It's just a cosmetic thing the, the character could be like i have three breasts and you're like can you it's like yeah it gives me extra sex appeal and you're like fuck all right you know or you say no it, it's just people don't really seem to care <laughs> or or the random guys into them as as would be but oh god you're complaining about a problem that you're playing into uh you, you mentioned red flags you're giving them a chance okay <laughs> It, it's clear that this is what this player wants to do. This is what they want their game to be. The question is, do you and the other players want the game to be that? That's really the question. They, uh, uh, sorry. There absolutely could be a game or a table where it is very adult-themed and that you guys are all spinning your rocks together, making them all nice and shiny. You guys know what I'm saying. Rock spinners. We all have those as kids. You, fuck, get the fuck out of here. Um... <laughs> But is that what your game is? Is that what your game is the DM is in? And are, did the other players sign up for it? That's really the only question. I, I'm not finger-wagging that you guys can't have an, an erotic, orgy-based swingers campaign. Go for it. More power to you. As long as everyone's like, yes, sign me up for that. <laughs> but if, if you didn't do that, then you just don't push the campaign that way. You can make the occasional bouncer or mechanic or gun shop owner have the, this this character's charm and appeal work on that that person. You could do that occasionally, but you just say, "Well, it doesn't work all the time, man." I'm sorry, this person's not interested in your boobs. But without like robbing from the player's experience and expression of the character, you can have it occasionally be like the bouncer's eyes go from your face down to your breasts, where they linger a little too long before snapping back and say. You are on the list, ma'am. Go right in. So you can play it off smoothly in a sort of real cyberpunk world sense. You just don't have to make all of it about it. You can just say, nah, that's th th this person's not interested. Try something else. Right? It it's on you as the DM to control that. You know that? Okay. Flirty romance. I like... Like, I had him be flirty back but flirting with someone whose idea of an outfit is nipple guards makes everything more difficult the npc was making them matching outfits while she's offering to let him feel her up next time they meet does the npc want to feel her up it's just that's how you it's it's not um it's not command word power word command here it, it it's not like a a magical compulsion. <laughs> they have no choice to resist, but to res you know, to, they can resist it. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, the third game involved them not really understanding what they were doing, despite having been given a prominent role again and blowing the cover of their mission almost instantly upon starting. To which I had to just sort of hand wave and say goodbye to the mission in the session. Honestly, it was just a mess of a game. By this point, numbers had gotten more openly aggressive towards K in the OOC because they were just acting up in a way that wasn't enjoyable for most of us. Getting really angered by how K was acting 
almost all the time. Mato never voiced concerns before this, but also wasn't terribly active in the OOC, which I now realize was because of how Kay was acting. Now, Kay was enthusiastic about the game, which is probably why I kept them around for as long as I did, but even that couldn't save the situation forever. See, this is the thing. I, I keep going back to this. I'll try not to make this too much longer here. Okay, we're almost done. Um, I think it's very generous as a DM to play to the things that interest your players uh, about their characters, certainly. Being sexually attractive to, to others, same sex, opposite sex, somewhere in between, doesn't, doesn't really matter. You can let them do that a bit, but just a bit. Just make it like 5% of the, the gameplay, or make it a quarter of that player's playtime. You've got three players. Everyone's going to get one third. And then for K, make sure that this isn't more than a quarter of their playtime. So it's, it's you know, I don't, we don't need to do all the numbers, but you get my point. Just be like, okay, oh yeah, your boobs are bouncy. And what else? What, what else does your character do when they go and talk to, gather information, investigate, go talk to the cops, do cyberpunk stuff? Uh, what else is there? You as the DM need to, to push it that way Be because you're not a eroticism vending machine for your players. You're just not. That's not what your, your game is. So in the end, it really comes down on you. And although to be fair, if this is in the OOC channel, then it is up to the other players and the DM to speak up and say, um, the OOC channel is not an eroticism channel. We'll make a separate channel for erotic or sexual theme gameplay. Romance eroticism goes in there. OOC is for um, non-relationship dynamic stuff. Fuck, dude. I don't know. Yeah. It's worth a conversation. I don't know that Kane needs to be kicked. As creepy as this is, you just got to have a conversation and mitigate K pushing it that way. It's not it's it's not against the rules to play of a, a, a um, I don't want to say slutty but an extremely promiscuous uh, character. It's not against the rules if you guys didn't come up with it in session zero. It's just the question is is it too much and is it because it's overpowering the fun that the DM and the other players are having? That's just a conversation that has to be had. It, I literally think you can just have K tone this down via conversation with everyone, everyone having a powwow, and K doesn't have to get kicked or booted at all. They're not a hell no, it's not a hell no red flag. It's just a, it's just a problem red flag. This is a problem. It's like being a murder hobo. It's just like being like, uh, the old man gives you a sour eye and spits on the ground. I pull out my sword and attack the old man. And you're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? No, 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 the old man has useful information. He's like, I don't care. He spit on the ground. I take that as an insult. And I'm like, dude, would you please, uh, would you please tone it down with the murder hobo? It, so th you see what I'm saying? Like, that's a player who's doing something that aggravates the whole game, but it doesn't mean the player needs to be booted. It just means that you, as the DM, need to have the conversation to shh, bring it down, bring it down, there, big guy, okay, or big girl in this case. Finally, Motto and Numbers just said that they couldn't handle being in a group with K anymore. So I bring it up to them and they get mad, but leave relatively quickly. But not before hurling an insult at Numbers, who had been the most openly critical of them. We had all hoped that they'd just cool it after their time with the vampires had shown negative consequences with how they looked and acted, but nothing seemed to stick. And it's hard to play in a game with a parody of a woman like that. Thankfully, it was a text game. I could couldn't have overlooked it. It I couldn't have overlooked it all if it was in voice. Anyways, that's the story of the horny cyberpunk net gremlin who died to an AI as they requested. They also requested every NPC who only interacted with them be miserable once they were gone. Um, this is just a lack of having the conversation working things out and it's a lack of a session zero again i don't know how long ago this happened i know most players nowadays know the idea the concept of a session zero but 
I understand it being cringy that Kay was playing a parody of a woman, but most most of the characters we play in, in role play in general are tropish. They are. I don't think it's unreasonable to be like, I'm going to be like a super sex vixen woman or sex vixen man. I, I don't think that breaks it. It's just when the gameplay always turns to that. It always goes to that over and over. And I'm just like, oh my God. Boom. This is the same thing. Think of... Here's an example that's way less cringe, but is completely cringe. The artificer classes that have the ability to make like a magic item to duplicate it. And every single long rest, they try and make an item and then sell it to somebody. As though every merchant in the world of D&D has a thousand GP to buy some freaking uncommon magic item with that then... Whether it lasts or not, I, I know the rules get all hairy. It's just like if every time you your guys hunker down at the inn to sleep and your artificer's like, I do this again, and what am I going to do with it? It's like, that's clever when you need to pull that out of the bag and for key situations, we're going to go into a battle tomorrow. So having an extra goggles of the owl would be helpful or some shit like that, right? But if it's just all the time, it's just I beat you over the head. This artificer just keeps doing this thing and will not never not do it. And it's and everyone's just like, oh, for fudge sakes, enough. <laughs> Dude, we don't need it right now. Please, when we need it, let's talk about it. We'll make a plan. We'll use that ability. But otherwise, your character isn't a vending machine for magic items. It, it's a broken trope that we all find boring at this point because you do it all the time. It is the same with playing this, this woman parody. It's just like, Dude, that can be who your character is a little bit of the time. But otherwise, please spare us from this constantly. That's just a straight-up conversation. It, I, I almost feel bad that Kay had to get the boot for playing creepy as opposed to people just saying, Hey, man, this is a little creepy. Can you, can you take it down a notch? I mean, yeah, you, can, you can flaunt a little bit when it's appropriate and it makes sense for what we're doing in the drama. But otherwise... Please don't. It, it's too. It's too much. It's it's too much, man. That's where it should have started was with that conversation. All right, that's a long one. Thank you so much for sharing, and I hope your role play group dynamic has improved since K went by the wayside. Take care.